In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use GNU Plot to put multiple plots on a single palette, like you see here. Here I have three graphs on the same palette. Uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to use the Lorenz Attractor to generate my data. You know, I have done that. And if you're interested, you can go to Wikipedia and read about the Lorenz Attractor. The important thing to, for us to take out uh, away from this is that we have three variables, or three equations, and each of the variables is a function of t. So let me show you the data that I start with. Here's my data file. I have four columns of data, t or time, x is the second column, y is the third column, and z is the fourth column. So I'm going to begin by generating a script that I'm going to call Lorenz.gp. And you don't have to call it .gp, I just do so that I know it's a GNU plot script. The value or the benefit of using um, a, a GNU plot script to generate your plots is that you don't have to retype everything every time you want to reproduce your plot or suppose you want to change something you don't have to go back and retype everything you just go back and edit your script perhaps it's just one line and then rerun the script so when beginning a GNU plot script I strongly recommend you begin with the reset command and what this does is flush all of the variables so you start fresh every time you execute your script and first things first Let's tell GNU Plot to use the default palette size, 100% of the width, and 100% of the height. Think of this ordered pair as x and y. And the 1 is a multiplicative factor, it means 100%. I'm going to throw GNU Plot into multi-plot mode. And when I'm done, this will be the last line of my script, I'm going to unset multi-plot. And everything I do just about is going to be contained within the set multiplot and unset, unset multiplot command. So it's nice to be organized, and I know that I'm going to have three plots. So let me set some comments for myself to give a logical partition to my script. And in my first plot, I need to set the size. Now the size is going to be one quadrant. Oops, spelled that backwards. So I'm going to have one half the height and one half, I'm sorry, one half the width and one half the height. And I'm going to set the origin, the lower left hand corner of each uh, plot, to be, well, for this guy, I am doing this one first. So the lower left hand corner is the origin, and this is going to be at x equals zero and y is equal to one half or half the way up. So x is 0 and y is 0 0.5. And then plot Lorenz dot dot using time versus x. Uh, width line, line width I'll set to be 0.5 and the line color will be black. Well, let's go ahead and plot that and see what it looks like. Ah, and here it is. Okay, great. So let me go back and do my other two now. I need to set the origin now to be, um, the origin is going to be somewhere in the middle, so 0 0.5 for my x position and 0 0.5 for my y position. And I can leave the size, I'll leave the size as it is. And I'm going to be plotting x versus y now, so that's going to be 2 colon 3. Let's plot this again and see how it looks. Okay, so far so good. And, oop, that was a mistake. And for my third plot, remember that third plot is going to span the entire width of the uh, palette. So I'll set the y uh, uh, factor to be 1, and the height is still going to be 1 half. And I will set the origin to be at the lower left hand corner of the entire palette, so 0, 0. And since this is going to be a 3D plot, I will use splot. And this is going to be uh, x versus y versus z. So that looks good.
Alright, so far so good, but there's still some things that need to be changed. First off, I don't really like including the key, so I'm going to remove those globally. And I need to fix this axis. The labels are, are sitting on top of each other, uh, as are the Z labels and the Y labels. Well, actually, this isn't so bad. Uh, let's take a look, see what we can do. So uh, I'm going to globally unset the keys, and this is going to apply to all of the graphs. And I'm going to change my X ticks so they don't sit right on top of each other. And I know that I started zero, and um, given the number of rows in my data file, I think I should increment by values of 25,000. Now, it's important to unset the change I made to X ticks after I make this plot, otherwise uh, this line will apply to all of the other graphs as well. So once I make this plot, I'm going to unset my, my X ticks back to the default. And one other thing I'm going to do too is I don't really like the viewing angles that I have here for my three-dimensional plot. So I'm going to change the viewing angles. The first angle is the rotation about the x-axis, and the second angle is the rotation about the z-axis. So I know from past experience that 16 degrees about the x-axis and 15 degrees about the z-axis works out pretty well. So that's what I'll use. And here we go. Ah, okay. I still have this problem with my Z and my Y axis. So let me go and correct that. I'll set my Y ticks. I'll start at negative uh, 20 and I'll increment by 10. And for my Z ticks, I will start from 0 and increment by 20, let's say. And of course, it's always a good idea to unset those changes as soon as they've been applied to the plot that is. So set Y ticks back to auto and set Z ticks back to auto. All right, things are getting better. Now I want to put axis labels on. So I'll set my X label on my first graph to be time, and my Y label on the first graph to be X sub I, let's say. Actually, just leave it as X, that's fine. And on my second plot, my X label will be X. and my Y label will be Y. And I'll do the same for my 3D plot. didn't like that. There we go. Um, notice I'm stuck in multi-plot mode right now. So before I go any further, let me just get out of multi-plot mode. There we go. I'm back in the, uh, the default mode. I'll run my script again. And here we go. Everything looks pretty good right now, except for the fact that my X label on my 3D plot, it's sort of running in line here with the numbers. And I think I want to lower this down a little bit. So I'm going to bring X down to here about. And I do that by doing the following. I go down to my X label. And I set the offset to be, I think the offset in the X direction is okay. And in the horizontal, or the vertical, horizontal direction is okay, but the vertical direction should be maybe negative one. Okay, very good. Now my x variable has been pushed down somewhat. So last thing, let's maybe put a title in for each of these. Set title. Uh, I'm not going to be very creative here. I'll just say first set title 
second and set title third just to show you how to do it okay now if I think I have something that looks good and I want to save all I do is go back to my GNU plot script and right at the beginning I'm going to I'm going to add these two lines set terminal I'm going to save this as a postscript an enhanced postscript and I'm going to set the output to be something like my plot dot EPS and I'm going to load this one last time and if I look I now have an EPS file called my plot EPS so let me open that up and here it is here's my new plot that looks very much like the example that I started with so um, in a nutshell this is how you can use GNU plot to generate multiple plots on the same palette. And uh, I, I hope this has been helpful. Thanks a lot.